Welcome to the Better Business, Better Life show. I'm your podcast host, Deborah Chantry-Taylor. In this podcast, I interview business owners, EOS implementers, and business experts who share with you their experiences, tips, and tools to help you create not only a better business, but also a better life. At the end of each show, you will have three tips or tools that our guests share that you can implement immediately into your life. If you want more information or want to get in contact, you can visit my website, debra.coach. That's D-E-B-R-A dot coach. Please enjoy the show. And today I'm joined in studio by Kat Peters, who is the, um, we'll call it co-owner, co-founder of Higher Staff, which she actually started with her husband, Johnny. Welcome to the studio, Kat. Thanks so much for having me. Oh, absolute pleasure. Looking forward to hearing your story. Um, so tell us a little bit about Higher Staff. So it's been going for around five years now, is that right? Yeah. So the business started in 2019 mm-hmm. and essentially Higher Staff is a recruitment agency and we focus on temp and temp to perm based roles. So yep. we cover a whole bunch of different industries but mainly trades and construction manufacturing logistics warehousing we've just opened our white collar division as well so we now can do all of the kind of hands-on manual work but also the business support side so finance roles um admin and all of that kind of stuff so we're a fully rounded agency now Excellent. And so why? Why did you decide to start your own business? Because we'd had a quick chat before we came in here and you were working in marketing and sort of, you know, very big companies and Johnny was working in some quite large recruitment agencies as well. That would have been a nice cushy kind of job where everything's kind of, you know, done for you. Why did you decide to go out on your own? Yeah, well, I guess Johnny and I had always had a bit of an entrepreneurial spirit as such. So we've done a few house renos where we've bought, done it up, flipped them on. We've always had an idea that we wanted to do something on our own Mm. and we got married in Jan 2019 we got back from our holiday and Johnny just said to me Kat like I don't want to go back to a big corporate the culture isn't great they don't do things the way that I think they should be done like I reckon we could do it better so essentially I reckon in the course of a couple of days we came up with a brand name we designed (laughs) a logo we built a website and then it was all on from there and essentially yeah Johnny kind of run it on his own for the first year with okay. me doing all the ops and payroll and all the back end stuff. Mm-hmm. And then we've grown it to a team of 19 in, in four and a half years. Wow, that's great. And um, five years, that's before COVID, right? Yeah. So you would have started it just, well, a couple of years before COVID actually hit. Yep. Yeah. yeah. So April 2019, we started. And then literally one year later, mm-hmm. COVID hit. Yeah. And all of our temps were off site because at that point in time, we were just doing trades. Right. So we had electricity and carpenters and they were with a lot of the kind of big companies Mm -hmm. and overnight we had nothing so (laughs) it went from being this great kind of growing business overnight to everything being shut down which Mm. was really really hard so Mm. we'd hired our first staff member I think in the January of 2020 Mm -hmm. and then by March we had to let them go because no one knew what was going on we had no bloody idea how to kind of manage it yes um but then we kind of reset and through COVID we actually hired a lot of staff so we did actually get the confidence we held our rates and we actually grew which was really really cool fantastic and so um going from working for somebody to working on your own what's been the biggest kind of challenges for you in terms of doing that (laughs) yeah well a lot it's actually funny you know like when you wake up in the morning you're like oh shit I feel kind of sick today you can't have a sick day there's no such thing when you own your own business so I think you actually have less flexibility when you work for yourself because um you know it doesn't stop you things have to keep going you've got to do the books or you've got to make those sales calls you've got to you know do your whips with your team members or whatever it is so Mm -hmm. I think the biggest challenge is that you just can't switch off yeah and I think that's been a big lesson for us because we thought oh you know like run your own business we've got to play (laughs) golf twice a week and you know live the life Riley but you you actually can't well I think you can over time and I think you probably find as it gets you know as the the training wheels come off and things are starting to pick up you will find it a lot easier but yeah in the beginning you're wearing multiple hats right yeah 100% and I think that's the thing you know Johnny had the experience from a recruitment side he knew the business model he knew the rates Mm -hmm. I was lucky in that I had a bit of business acumen from my marketing um, background and kind of together was really really good but early on you have to learn so many different things like tax legal side of things like there's so much stuff that you just don't know because when you're a little cog in a big wheel you only focus on marketing and brand as opposed to doing 
every single function within a business. Yeah, no, it's really true. I actually come from a corporate background as well yeah. originally. Um, and yes, you're right. I mean, you have a very narrow kind of focus because there's somebody in the team that can do all the other things. And all of a sudden you get into your own business like I did. Yeah. And all of a sudden you've got to wear all those different hats and, and be very broad in terms of the way you actually do the business. Um, working with your husband, <laughs> he's not here so I can ask you this, oh, but yeah, how right. are you? <laughs> Shh, if he's listening, yeah, no, yeah. Um, how, how's that been for you? Yeah, it's it's been yeah, it's been challenging. Yeah. I think it is really cool as well, though, because we get to spend a lot of time to, time with each other. Mm -hmm. But I think we are definitely very mindful that you know when we're at work, we're there to work, so we do have the ability to separate stuff yep. in the office. Whereas at home, that separation definitely gets blurred. <laughs> I think you know it is it is a, a challenge because you want to have that separation, but when you get back from work, there's always stuff you want to talk about. Mm -hmm. And yeah, you, you want to keep talking about it because you want to grow and you want the business to get better. Yes. And so you don't really have an off button, but it's been great. Like Johnny and I are really lucky in that we balance each other's skill sets, which mm -hmm. is really cool. Yeah. So we're quite fortunate in the fact that we do work really well together. No, that's good. And you've got a young family, of course, as well. Yeah. So one already and one on the way. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So Ollie's coming up too. So yes. he's, he's, yeah, coming into the terrible twos, but that's all right. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, we just make it work. You know, I have slightly shorter hours so I can do the drop-offs and pickups and Johnny works the longer hours, but, you know, I also do work in the evening sometimes as well. So mm. I don't know. We make it work. It is hard, but I don't know what we're going to do when the second one comes along. <laughs> to be It'll be interesting, but I'm sure it'll yeah. be absolutely fine. You'll work yeah. through it. So you just, so we just talked before again, um, you just won an award. So congratulations. Yes, thank you. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah. So basically since we started the business, we've been entering the Auckland Business Awards. So mm -hmm. they're run by the Auckland Business Chamber. Yep. And we've been finalists three times for Best Emerging Business. Mm. And finally this year, we took the prize which Yay. is awesome so we finally won which is really really cool so I think it's just testament to our determination and, and the growth that we've seen mm. and you know our team has been working extremely hard over the last 18 months to kind of get us into this position yep and so we've both grown financially but all our systems are great like we're, it's a fully rounded business now and I think that's probably why we've won it this year sure and so um how many staff do you say you've got now you've got so we've got 19 full-time staff yep. and we've got about 400 people out on site working for us so mm. that's across our like a variety of different clients yeah sure okay and so systems and processes I want to explore that a little bit further because it's one of the things I'm, I'm very passionate about is that if you really want to create a business where you can get away from the day-to-day -day, you've got to have replicable systems you've got to have processes you've got to be able to actually let go and let the team get on with it how did you even start with that because often in a large organization it's already there for you I'm going to think too much about it yeah so I, it's actually funny you know people talk about COVID as this nasty thing that happened, but there was actually a lot of good that came out of it for us. So, mm -hmm. you know, when we first started, everything was done on paper, for example. So terms of business with clients, application forms with candidates, everything was manually done, scanned, and then saved into the system on a, in a folder as such. Whereas yeah. when COVID hit, we couldn't meet our candidates, we couldn't meet our clients. So we had to digitalize some of our key processes. Okay. Look, it kind of forced our hand as such. Yep. So in a way, you know, we had to adapt and we had to move pretty bloody quickly because in absence of meeting candidates face to face, we had to get them to fill in forms online and we had to interview online and all that kind of stuff. So we have, uh, I guess, changed our processes internally, which has allowed us to scale probably a lot quicker mm -hmm. than we would have otherwise. Yep. And I guess from, uh, you know, like a payroll and um, finance side of things as well we've also kind of step changed that so again it used to be manual timesheets each week so oh, a yes. temp would fill in their hours <laughs> they'd get the client to sign it off they'd send it in our payroll team would manually enter it into the system whereas now it's all digital and so has that been sort of um, your own software or have you used off-the-shelf software or how have you actually done that yeah there's a lot of off-the-shelf software we did a lot of research the project took us probably 18 months to implement because mm -hmm. there's a lot of good options out there but we wanted everything to kind of talk to each other so yeah. we we are now in a position where our crm talks to our payroll system everything is kind of cohesive our payroll system talks to our invoice system oh, so nice. everything's linked so it, it allows us to have only two non-billing people and when i say non-billing means people that aren't generating money yep so two out of 19 staff are essentially just dedicated to ops and payroll and stuff mm -hmm. whereas a lot of other businesses and you can see it 
um, you know, online, they've got five, six, seven, eight people doing the same <sighs> job that we've work. got two people doing. So mm. it's very efficient for us now that we've got those systems in place. And so did you get some help with that? I'm just interested in terms of, was it, I mean, how, how did you go about it? So you knew it had to change. In fact, you, as you said, you were forced, your hand was forced because of COVID. What was the first kind of step towards that? What did you have to do to kind of go, this needs to change? <laughs> now what? <laughs> yeah, well, I guess I was lucky in that in my marketing career I've kind of come across a number of different platforms and tools that have already been used by other businesses so mm -hmm. I'll be honest like everything kind of fell on me to get it sorted <laughs> yeah. you know Johnny's awesome with sales and all of that kind of stuff but his skill set definitely isn't in the back end ops whereas yeah. that's definitely mine yes so I think it was just you had to learn really quickly do a lot of research really quickly we have a business coach as well that we've been seeing since probably yeah two or three months in to yep. when we started and he was a really really good help for kind of suggesting things but you know we used a CRM that one of our competitors use and then from that there was a lot of partners that we could kind of tap into so it was actually pretty easy to be fair um I don't know maybe we just make it look easy but I was gonna say you probably, you, probably don't, you probably underestimate what you yeah. already know I think a lot of people don't necessarily have that tell me a little bit about the business coach because um obviously I'm a business coach yeah. myself and I'm I'm very much an advocate I actually believe you should always have a coach um an operating system in the business and then a peer group you can actually talk to as well so what but not everybody understands or appreciates the benefit of that so what's been the benefit why did you get one to start off with what's been the benefit of that for you yeah so I guess we knew that we didn't know everything yep. and we knew of business coaches I don't know how but we did and Johnny just did a google search literally and this <laughs> person that we use Toss um, he ranks number one yeah and we we met with him and we developed a really good rapport straight away he was young he'd built and sold businesses he was punching above his weight for his age like he was just a really cool guy and yep. he knew a lot he was very knowledgeable and I think you know business can be really lonely and you know people don't really get it if you haven't been in business mm -hmm. they're like oh yeah that must be fun it must be easy and you're like no no, no. it's not <laughs> yeah. so he he was a really good advocate for what we were doing and he has kind of yeah nudged us along in the, in the right direction yep. but equally we often go there we'll talk to him we're like yeah crack on do it yep. so sometimes it's just reassurance of your ideas as mm. opposed to actually getting advice yeah um interesting is any of your family uh business owners or entrepreneurs uh so my old man runs a, a well he ran his own building okay. business yeah it, it was just him but he was still self-employed so i guess I've seen it and also Johnny's stepdad run a sign company in the UK so yeah. I think we've probably grown up around you know people that have actually worked for themselves which mm. is quite cool and also other people in my family like my brother is in real estate so he's always kind of worked for himself yeah and we always know you know every book that you read tells you that you're only going to get rich if you work for yourself so <laughs> that was an, I guess that's another main driver you know we want financial freedom and yep. The way to do it is by working. It's just office. interesting though, because you mentioned being lonely. And I suppose, so I grew up in a very traditional family, which means that my mum and dad they didn't actually even understand working for yourself. Their their goal was to basically um, have me get a good education, so I could find a good husband, so I could settle down, get married, and we could lead like a good life working for somebody else. I was the black sheep of the family, pushed <laughs> against all of that, and, and wanted to do something different. But you know, if you are starting a business, there is that loneliness, right? Because you can't talk to other people because that your friends who are working in corporate marketing still don't understand what running a business is really like would that be fair yeah 100 percent. and even now like we we don't have anyone in our friendship group that runs their own business everyone's in a nine-to-five job and when you tell them you can't do something because of the business they're like yeah. they don't really get it, get it. Yeah. and you also can't lean on them for advice mm. you know the challenges that we face are very different yes you know if shit hits the fan in a corporate oh well someone else will help and <laughs> yeah, you're still going to get your your pay at the end of the week whereas yeah if a client doesn't pay an invoice for us like we feel it in our pockets yeah. so it is very different and yeah, people just don't get it <laughs> no, <they don't. laughs> yeah which is why it's, i think it's important to have that coach potentially a peer group you can actually talk about yeah. these things with as well so tell us a little bit about winning the award so when you go and you enter a business award um, they obviously have criteria they have a process that they go through as well what was it like going through that process what do they what kind of questions do they ask you and what are they looking for in your business yeah, so I think it depends on what awards you're entering. So we've entered a couple. We've entered Deloitte, where we came fourth yep. on the that's Fast the Fast Fifty. Yeah, Fast yep. Fifty oh, last wow. year. No, yep. We'll be we'll be back this year as well. I've yep. actually been asked to speak on the panel. I've spoken to the launch 
um, launch event a few weeks ago and on the um, actual event night I'll be speaking as well so cool. with Deloitte it's financial it's numbers yeah. it's hard and fast it's black and white you're either in or you're out which yeah. is quite <laughs> nice uh, whereas the business chamber is a little bit more um, subjective mm -hmm. and I think yeah you you've got to be a fully rounded business it's not just about growth it's not just about high numbers it's about doing all different functions yep. really well so how do you treat your staff like how yeah. do you do your marketing what's your strategy and planning like so they ask a lot of questions around how you actually operate internally mm -hmm. you know what are the challenges kind of similar to what you're asking me today you know what are the challenges how did you overcome them yep all of that kind of stuff so it's it's a lot harder to win those awards <laughs> than it is to win it win a Deloitte yeah, but both have, are equally, um, you know, great in terms of the, the Deloitte is about hard numbers. Yeah. So business is a mixture of hard numbers yeah. and the soft skills as well. And I think actually that, that you, you know, the people part is really fascinating, right? Because people can make or break a business. How do you make sure you have the right team in higher staff? Yeah, so people, we're, our whole business is made on people. Yep. We get good people in and our product is people as well. <laughs> yes. So we're very different to other agencies in that we don't recruit from within the industry. Mm. Every single person that we've recruited, we've hired based on attitude and energy. Yep. And that's exactly what we want. You know, we've got people that have come from sites. So we've got an ex electrician, we've got an ex roofer, yep. an ex laborer, and they're in our trades team. So you've got trades people talking to trades people, selling trades people. Mm -hmm. And so it honestly just comes down to attitude and energy. Yep. Then on our warehousing team, we've got people from within different warehousing businesses that might have been in a sales role or we've got a flight attendant, but we can train anyone. If you've got the right attitude, you've yep. got the right energy, you do the work, you're away laughing. We're on the same page. Yeah. I completely agree. I think it's all about values, right? At the end of the day, attitude, values, if they if they feel um, like they fit in with the business, you can actually teach them anything. And it's really interesting. So I was talking to um, Ian from Farrow Jemison, who's at the other end of the recruitment scale, right? And he has a very similar kind of attitude. He has people come to him and they go, well, we want somebody who's got these kind of, you know, they've got to have this experience. He's like, why? Because actually, if you've got the right attitude, the right values, um, they can often be better for the business because they actually challenge things that maybe somebody who's come from uh, FMCG market. Um, I tried to break into it many, many years ago and I, I couldn't because I had no FMCG marketing experience. It didn't mean I wasn't a bloody good marketer, but I just didn't have that. And it's it's funny how industries, you know, kind of go that we want to have people from our industry and yet sometimes bringing somebody in from external can make a massive difference. Yeah, and I think you're right. You know, the reason why we bring people in that haven't been in the industry is because we we do have a certain way of doing things and yep. if you get people in from industry they've got their own ideas they've already got their ways of working how they do stuff yep. and you can clash yes <laughs> so essentially if you bring someone in you can mold them to the higher staff way and that's exactly what we do excellent yeah okay um what are the what's been the biggest challenge do you think in the business uh, overall in the last five years because i mean I, we always get taught that you know business has grown this beautiful beautiful <sighs> smooth curve and we know that's not necessarily true what do you would say is the biggest challenge you've had i think it's the growth in the team so you know we've gone from it just being Johnny and I to yep. a team of 19 and neither of us have had that leadership or people management experience. Mm -hmm. You know, people were, people were hard, you know, like <laughs> they're hard work and they're very nuanced, you know, they have their own kind of ways of working and challenges and it's been really difficult for us to manage that a team of that size yep. so we're now in this phase where we've scaled really quickly we don't have the management structure in place and now we're like okay shit we need to <laughs> you know build up team leaders from our existing senior consultants yep we also need to bring someone in to kind of head it up so now we're in that stage of okay all right we need to put a bit of structure in place we need to get some more support at a management level yep so we can actually go away and grow the business as opposed to working in it day-to-day -day, managing whips and all that kind of stuff so yeah. I think that's the biggest challenge and just ge generally dealing with people is is difficult because yeah. everyone's different yeah no, I completely agree and, and actually people do, do they need to have boundaries they need to actually understand how they fit in how they mm. um, contribute to success um, what they do that doesn't contribute to success as well okay and so what do you most proud of because you know apart from winning an award of course which is amazing but I mean what are you most proud of of the in the business well for me personally I think um, we've grown a really great brand mm -hmm. and you know obviously background in marketing it's it's really difficult to create a brand from scratch and actually make a dent in the industry yep. and we definitely have you know I would say that we're one of the biggest players 
particularly in the Auckland market now. Yep. So I think building that brand from scratch is a real success for me. Yes. And you know, we were also nominated for marketing excellence in the oh, Business Chamber Awards as well. So perfect. even that nomination is really special. Yep. But I think overall getting fourth in Deloitte last year is yeah. definitely the, the highlight. We had um, over 500% growth mm -hmm. to get there. Yep. And we are officially the fastest growing recruitment agency. We're the fastest growing services business across New Zealand nationally. Wow. So yeah, that's definitely the biggest achievement that we've had. And again, congratulations. That's really cool. I'd give you a high five. <laughs> <Thanks. everyone. Yeah. laughs> okay. And so what are the plans for the future? What, what are you, because, um, you know, the ultimate goal, I suppose, is to have that chance to have more freedom, to have time with the family. Um, what's, what's the goal? What does the future look like? Yeah. So everyone asks us and we just don't really know the answer you know we're still a relatively young business yep. but we know that it's going to take probably a couple more years of hard graft mm -hmm. to get it into a place where it's kind of self-managed particularly the Auckland and Wellington branch yep. from a growth point of view we're still working out where we want to go there's a couple of options you like do you scale the country or do you keep it tight but expand within the mm. the location that you're already in so we're not really sure where to go yet, right. um, but there's a few options on the table and I guess it just depends on what we want and how we prioritize that. Yep. But yeah, you're right. Definitely want to get it self-managed so we can take a bit more time out to spend with family and do the stuff we love doing. Yeah. Uh, but equally, we still want to be heavily involved in the business. Yeah. yeah. Fair enough. Okay, cool. So what um, we always ask, my, I always ask my guests, you know, what are the sort of three top tips or tools that you can share with people listening? Because it's like, you know, what have you, is there a great book that you've read? Is there something that you kind of go, I wish I'd done that earlier? Yeah. What would they be? <laughs> I think... The biggest thing for us, and I think while we've done so well, is focus. Mm -hmm. So I think a lot of businesses, they want to do everything and be everything to everyone, whereas we've been really, really tight in what we focus on. So when I talk about focus, it's focusing on two or three sectors that we want to go after. Yep. It's making sure that from our marketing point of view, we're only investing money in a couple of channels that we know work. Yep. So it's making choices and saying no. And that could even be saying no to clients that want to screw you down on rates. So yeah. I think you need to be really, really focused on what you do in all different functions within the business. Mm -hmm. And then that will allow you to do things really well. And I think, yeah, there's a, there's an old saying or there's an old adage that, you know, the, the, the most successful people are the people who say no. Yeah. Because if you keep saying yes to everything, you actually lose the capacity to have space for the really good stuff. And there are some clients, let's face it, who just are not the right clients and we shouldn't work with them. <laughs> yeah, 100%. And that's the thing, you know, early on, Johnny was very, very mindful that we didn't drop rates. Yep. Even through COVID, we didn't drop rates because once yeah. you go down, it's bloody yeah, hard to, to come back, back up. Yep. And so, you know, from our point of view, you know, we don't go after the commercial companies that have 500 staff because yep. they want to pay the lowest rate. It's all about money for them. Mm -hmm. Whereas we'd rather kind of go after the middle medium-sized businesses yep. that are happy to pay the rates and you know we deliver a great service so we might be a little bit more expensive than other agencies yeah but you get what you pay for as well I'm not comparing apples with apples yeah okay so focus yep completely yep, agree definitely focus. yep number two what do you got number two um i think it's around you know we've already kind of spoken about it from a support point of view mm -hmm. have the right support around you early on because that will put you in a really good position so we had our business coach from yeah the first couple of months yeah. but equally we've got an HR consultant that we lean on we've got a legal team externally that we lean on immigration uh, accounting so you don't have to have all the functions within your business you yep. just need to have them around you so making sure you've got the right support systems in place yep. I think is really really important and we can't do everything and it, it does my head a little bit because this whole number eight wire mentality of the of Kiwis is really really good from an innovation point of view right it's great that we're pushing the boundaries and we're wanting to change things and we're prepared to give it a go but it also means sometimes we think we can do everything ourselves. and I'm an ex-marketer so yeah. I, I always hate it when I kind of work with companies that kind of go oh yeah well we can build our own website you know we don't want to pay all that money to our website built or we won't pay to have our brand done we can it's just a logo we can come up with a logo we can use canva <laughs> and it's like actually um start properly get the support as you said it hasn't got to be internally but get the right people around you it just makes such a huge difference if you can get the foundations right from the beginning yeah 100 yeah. and i think in hindsight if we look back one of the things that i wish we'd done is done all that systems and process stuff earlier uh, I yeah. mean it was only a year in where we had to we were forced to do it because of COVID but if we'd had all of that stuff set up from day one we probably would have been, been able to scale quicker mm -hmm. 
albeit you know we had to be mindful of cash flow at the same time but. sure yeah cash flow is always a uh, cash yeah. flow is king <laughs> and before I ask for the third one I just want to explore the immigration a wee bit because obviously yeah I imagine you are quite reliant on um, immigrants to actually fill these roles and things in the company um it's been a tough couple of years hasn't it <laughs> yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. It, um, immigration and yeah is very very challenge challenging so obviously with COVID the borders shut yep we prior to that we had a lot of overseas qualified sparkies and carpenters and all that kind of stuff and and these people want to work mm -hmm. they are so reliable they do the jobs that a lot of kiwis don't want to do yep. and so when the border shut it was really really challenging yep. even when the borders have been opened the process with accreditation has been quite challenging quite slow it, there's you're very slow there's a <laughs> yeah. lot of red tape you've got to prove a lot of different things before yeah. you can actually bring them over so we're accredited in new zealand we're also accredited in the philippines oh, yep. but we've actually put that on hold this year because of what's happening in the market mm -hmm. we're hoping to open it up once the economy starts to pick yeah. up and businesses have a bit more confidence because sure. it's pretty bloody risky bringing people in at the minute yeah it's it's really interesting I don't want to get political at all but <laughs> I know, remember when I was um, living over in Australia and I, I came from the UK moved to Australia I was living in a household of um, aircraft engineers and they were all British and they were all you know trained and educated in Britain on how to work on aircraft and yet they had to go through this ridiculous process to transfer their qualifications to Australian qualifications and yet with all due respect you know the actual training and qualification process over in the UK was infinitely better than the one in Australia but there was this whole kind of you know rule around but you have to be Australian qualified not UK qualified is there a similar kind of thing that goes on here yeah 100% particularly with electrical workers so yep. you have to transfer all your quals into New Zealand same with anyone that's on like driving trucks for oh, example yep. that also needs to be converted mm -hmm. it is yeah it is really challenging and even just trying to uh, get approval to bring someone in is really hard so for example we had a guy internally he was a salesperson for us yep. working as an account manager um, his visa expired uh, a couple of weeks ago yep. and it took us probably three months to get him his visa yep. but you had to go through the rigmarole of showing that you couldn't find a New Zealander yeah, to do yeah. it and all of that kind of stuff and he's bloody great and we're, we're luckily his visa yeah. came through last week so we've oh. been able to keep him which <laughs> yeah, is yeah. really cool but <laughs> yeah. the process could be made a lot easier I and i and i think you know i'm, I'm all for um you know not bringing people in when there are people who want to do this work but as you said there are actually some jobs that, that we don't have enough kiwis to do the work and so we have to rely on that immigration to actually fill those roles um and if they want to do the work then why wouldn't we let them have it yeah. has it just been a bit of a back uh, not backlash but like a, a um a hangover from covid or has it always been a little bit of a challenge getting people into the country i think well for us i can only talk from our experience it definitely yeah. yeah we were only obviously set up in 2019 and at that point initially we had a lot of overseas workers and that wanted to do the jobs that mm. kiwis didn't yep. and when the borders you know got shut and people had to go back home it was really hard to fill some of the low skilled roles mm -hmm. and so now that the borders are open we're definitely seeing a lot of people and a lot of backpackers coming in yep. some of our clients only want backpackers because they know they're going to work 40 50 hour weeks and they're reliable they turn up they do a good job because they're yes. here to work make money and then kind of travel around the country so we, yeah. we saw it when we were um it was in the middle of covid i think it was a point where we opened up a little bit and so we we're able to travel a little bit around new zealand and we love cycling so my husband and i actually went cycling in the hawks bay we love the hawks bay it's our second favorite place outside of auckland mm -hmm. and we were traveling around you know on the bikes with the dogs and it was just all this fruit all over the ground rotting mm -hmm. because there was nobody there to actually pick the fruit um and that was you know there must have been I, I dread to think how much stuff actually went to waste because there's nobody there to pick it. It's it's quite scary. Okay, um, we get we got a bit <laughs> diverted there, which is all cool. Third top tip: What would be the last thing you would say that you um you know can share with other business owners? I think, and I, we kind of touched on it earlier as well. I think it's making sure that you make time and make space for yourself. <laughs> yes. So <laughs> we haven't really been that good at it until this year, but. You know, one of the things that we've been really mindful of this year is making sure that once a quarter we've got something to look forward to, whether it's a week away or having a holiday for a week or yeah. a, a long weekend or something planned that we can take some time off and have some space. Yeah. So I think it's really, really important that you give yourself, you know, breathing space from the business. Obviously, you're probably going to talk about it on holiday anyway, but yeah. even just removing yourself from the office and from your your home. Changing the environment. It, it cha yeah, changing yeah. the environment is awesome. The other thing that we have done right from the beginning, which has actually been really good, is every week we go out for a meal. Oh, so nice. we get a babysitter. Date in. Yeah. Da it's, it's honestly a date night. Yeah. We, 
we go out for a meal and it does give us the ability to switch off even though we don't really yeah but yeah. still just having a nice meal out and and that's also a bit of a reward for all of our hard work so yeah. it's having those regular things in and you've got to be structured and planned with it mm-hmm. because if you don't then you're probably not going to do it and you'll always be like oh no i've got to do this we'll go out to dinner tomorrow night and i think it's similar in business as well i mean even when you've got to work because in business you've got the business as usual stuff and you've got the stuff that is actually the the non-urgent but important stuff that moves the business forward and i think you've still got to make time for that as well and, and people kind of people laugh at my calendar because it is so structured in terms of i have a morning routine i have an evening routine i have um certain um, blocks blocked out for clarity breaks certain blocks for doing bits of work and it feels like it's very structured but it actually gives you freedom because if you didn't do that i guarantee somebody else will fill that gap for you no matter what that gap is somebody will find someone to fill it with and so even just planning your date nights planning your weekends away like we're going to see bobby williams and napier very shortly and you know just having knowing that's coming up it, it forces you to actually take that time out which if you didn't actually plan it it could very easily just get eaten up by the all-consuming thing called business yeah yeah 100 percent. and i think like even during the week i tried to do a similar thing to you so on fridays i'm at home yeah so i know that on fridays i can get all of the big project stuff that's actually going to move the business forward mm-hmm. as opposed to being in the office where people ask you questions or they want to chat or you've got a whip or whatever it might be so you've got to make that space for yourself both yep. For your own mental health but also to drive the business forward as well yeah i was actually talking to a, a lady the other day who has got a so the eisenhower matrix is the matrix most people know about which is the, not the urgent non-urgent yeah. important non-important and she said we don't need any more urgent or important stuff in our life so she's got this 4q framework and it's really really cool because it actually turns it on its head and it just talks about actually um, rather than trying to make ourselves busier how do we make sure we maximize our energy and our use of our energy so she's coming on the show very shortly so i'm quite oh, looking nice. forward to seeing that but yeah it's just interesting that you know she says it's it's even just things like when you come into work in the morning, you know, if you're a leader or a manager, you're usually kind of driving into work or walking into work and going, hey, when I get into the office, I'm going to work on XYZ project. And then of course, you walk into the office and suddenly everyone in the office wants to kind of go, oh, Kat, can I just grab you for a moment? Let me just ask you this. And if you're anything like me, you get a little bit triggered by that. Like, but I came <laughs> in here to do this and now you're all asking me these questions. And so because you get triggered, then of course, they see that on your face and then they get triggered. And suddenly we're all kind of in this triggered kind of high stress in environment she's coming to the office and just what the first thing you do is you actually come and go right you've got I've got one hour anybody want me need me what do you need how do I help you what can I do to make the business kind of work better and then you lock yourself away in your office or in a quiet safe space Mm -hmm. for a set period of time and you say I'm going to be gone for 45 minutes you let your team know it'll be 45 minutes little note says I'll be free at 11 o'clock and so you're removing right from the beginning you're taking away that whole stress and kind of going I'll give you everything you need then I'll have my quiet time then I'll come back out again yeah, 100%. And I, yeah, and I loved it. I just thought that was to me that was just genius because I don't think in all of my, I've managed staff my entire life, and in all my time, I've always got caught in that trap of being triggered by people wanting my time. <laughs> yeah, 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 for sure. And I think that also lends itself to the need for us to get that management structure in place. You yeah. know, for Johnny and I, at the minute, we're just the go-to people for everything. absolutely everything. Yeah. Whereas if you've got team leaders, you know, people can go to them. If you've got a, a branch manager, people yep. can go to them for stuff as well. And so that's the plan yes. to kind of almost make Johnny and I less needed, <laughs> yeah, which yeah, would be yeah. quite nice. <laughs> yep. And then, it, yeah, it'll free you up to actually do stuff that you need to get done. Oh, perfect. Okay, cool. Okay, so um, that's really cool. So focus. So make sure you're focusing on the right things and saying no often. Um, get the right, so surround yourselves with the right support. So that not everything has to be in-house, but make sure you've got your immigration HR experts so they're available for you. And then make time for your yourself and for your family. So time to pursue other passions. Yeah brilliant okay um tell us a little bit about um higher stuff now so what is your ideal client who do you love to work with and how do people get in contact with you yeah so like i've said higher stuff is a, a fully rounded recruitment agency so yep. we can span both blue collar and white collar roles okay so i guess the clients or the companies that we like to deal with is basically anyone that needs staff yeah so we have businesses that are a team of 10 right up to a team of 100 plus so the the size of the business doesn't really matter mm-hmm. if you need someone then we can find find you the people yeah and essentially i guess one of the reasons why we're different is we place a lot of focus on urgency urgency is one of our key values right so if you ask us for a staff member on monday we'll do our best to get you one for tuesday so we operate at pace and yep. i guess that's one of the reasons why we win mm-hmm. um, in terms of how can you get in contact with us yep give us a bell, Uh, just jump onto the website, just put a request through and then we can 
I don't know, facilitate it out to the right team. So we've got a trades and construction team. We've got a warehousing manufacturing logistics team. Mm -hmm. And now we've got white collar as well. So whatever you need, we've got it. Yep. Just give us a bell and we can have a chat. Perfect. Hey, look, thank you so much for taking time to come in. Congratulations on the win. Thank well you. deserved. And also on the, on the Lloyd thing as well. I look forward to seeing how you go this next year round. Um, yeah. I'm sure watch with interest. But yeah, really appreciate you spending the time and sharing your knowledge and expertise. Yeah, thanks so much for having us. Oh, absolute pleasure. Cheers. Thanks. thanks for listening to the podcast show, Better Business, Better Life. My name is Deborah Chantry-Taylor. I'm an EOS implementer, family business advisor, business and leadership coach, podcaster and speaker. However, I'm also a business owner with several current business interests. I'm fortunate to have lived the high life with all the lifestyle, the toys, you name it, and then I've lost it all, not only once but twice in two spectacular train wrecks. I know what it's like to experience the highs and lows. I came across EOS when they launched into New Zealand using my Entrepreneur's Playground and Event Centre in Parnell, Auckland. I love the simplicity of the tools and their philosophies fitted my personal brand statement perfectly. The brilliance is in the simplicity. I've always been passionate about seeing entrepreneurs lead a life they love, and now I help them live that EOS life. Doing what they love, with people they love, making a huge difference in the world, being compensated appropriately, and with time to pursue other passions. If you want more information or want to get in contact about using EOS in your business, you can visit my website at debra.coach. That's www.debra.coach. Thanks for listening.